So, Michael, you've been in Australia for quite a few years working um, <coughs> as an artist, and particularly you're very well known as an artist working with icons, and your commissions are now all over Australia. Um, so that must be very exciting for you, and, and we've got an example of your work here. So tell, tell me a little bit about um, your background and training, and, and you know, what inspired you to, to become an artist? Uh, <clears throat> I know that uh, <clears throat> since the very young age, I, I think uh, five or six, I just was constantly drawing and painting, that, that, so that was a natural uh, thing um, to do uh, without knowing whether I would do it one day professionally or not. At, and at the age of 17, um, after uh, working with my mother, she uh, Organized an exhibition, quite a big exhibition in um, in former Yugoslavia, where I lived in Belgrade. Um, then, seeing so many artists around and so many artwork around, I was it was very stimulating and exciting, and that really made my decision um, at the age of 17. So, uh, the following year, when I finished the high school, I enrolled in the Academy of Arts. Um, that was called then the Academy of Applied Arts, uh, uh, five years full-time uh, art school there, where I uh, joined the department of printmaking. And then um, something, I don't know, relatively odd, I think, happened to me. Um, just before the end of my art school, uh, before the end of my studies, I. Um, contemplated my own work and my own self and all this. So um, the way I saw my own de development was um, something that uh, one art critic here called uh, relentlessly mediocre. So I couldn't sort of see myself going through life with uh, that sort of uh, awareness and given that I really was planning to do it professionally and to live on that, I sort of found it impossible to um, find the satisfaction first for myself uh, with my own work, which is very difficult, then with honest critics, so to say, people who really know what a good painting is, and then the public or audience or customers, people who basically acquire your work and in order to um, give it some sort of recognition, but also to keep you going. And also given that I had other interests, um, such as traveling, languages, all these things, I said, I hereby decide to make my, get my diploma, that piece of paper, because um, just I was about to finish anyway, and then I will never ever draw a line or paint a painting. So all until um, some maybe 15 years ago, when the I, I started feeling a bit of a bug there and uh, the itchiness about going back to it. And uh, <clears throat> it uh, well coincided with my uh, idea and need to move to another country, to live, which I always wanted to. I lived elsewhere anyway in the last uh, 20 odd years. So I, um, um, in that, during that quest uh, uh, for, for my new land and the home, homeland, so to say, I came to Australia just to see what, what, what it is like on a suggestion of a good friend. And uh, I think it took me about three days or something like this. I landed in Sydney in the first place. And it took me about three days to say, I can't believe this is, this is it. This is all I ever wanted from a city from a place. Uh, um, and what happened was <laughs> I, I uh, well, was in a dilemma. I definitely wanted to, to do something about going back to my art work. No doubt about that, so that was a good, good thing. But on the other hand, I had to live on something. So in the first year, I tried many, many things, many ways of making my living. As I thought, I would be 
doing something for say three days a week or whatever, or maybe four, and the rest I would paint. So that sounded logical. To that end, I even um, finished the, the, the security officer course. I have a diploma there. You needed a paper even then, back then, 14 years ago. I then finished the barman and the cocktail and bar service course. I still have the, the, the even the suit and all these things. You can carry it down and you can do <coughs> all, yes, do all these things. And I was about really to get the job, but even I couldn't get even that type of job. I couldn't teach because uh, back there in former Yugoslavia we were trained and um, how would I say, qualified to be teachers and professors of art, but here it wasn't recognized, so I would have needed to um, <coughs> supplement it by two more years of uh, night school or something like this, which I didn't want. Um, and uh, I tried the graphic design uh, because it, it was quite compatible to something that I was doing back there. Then I was told I need to know uh, the computers and I just really had a problem with computers. I, I remember that. So nothing worked and I must admit, I, I like to remember that period I was really uh, very down, very low in all senses, nothing worked. I didn't think anybody really can live on, on, on art and all art, uh, especially not my own art I can see as a possibility, as a contemporary stuff. Icons as well were just uh, receiving the polite shrugging of shoulders, uh, mainly, I mean, uh, so I just didn't know what to do. Nothing worked, so in my kind of desperation I lived in um, one bedroom place, like a studio apartment or something, I needed, uh, I decided to put everything on that card, on art, because that was the only thing I could do day and night and, uh, you know, not wait for a job to come in and, or something, or maybe in uh, waiting for something better to come. Here was art that could have been tackled immediately. Yeah, that, um, that you've got is, is an interesting example. Uh, for me, I can see um, through some sense of the tradition and with icon painting one is drawn into a space which is heavenly and uh, uh, beautiful it take, it's like a swimming kind of experience for the eye you're drawn, drawn into another space but I can also see maybe the Australian landscape um, those wonderful colours of Bondi Beach um, that brutal yellow and the, and the blue aqua of the sea and fragments of other other associations there in the picture so um, be interesting for you to uh, just to tell me a little bit about about some of the experiences in this space that you're creating is this is an is, is this an Australian icon or is there a sense of spirituality about Australia that's um, a new experience for you the second painting perhaps was influenced by what you're saying by living here in Australia but I've just mentioned before that <clears throat> how in the first place it all started that the crucifixion is depicted the way or conceived the way it is basically. Many years ago I got a little uh, present from a friend and that was a, a little figurine of Christ uh, in metal, uh, crucified obviously, uh, but without a cross and even missing one arm. For some funny reason, I, I started playing with that particular figurine in my drawings and paintings and that basically became my ever um, present Christ from the crucifixion in the painting so far at least <clears throat> of the crucifixion because I never wanted to dwell on um, anatomical, photographic or any kind of other reality depicting Christ in suffering in detail on the cross that has been done much more successful throughout centuries anyway. I wanted to give the idea of Christ, the hint of Christ, the silhouette of Christ, the contour, uh, just to bring to the viewer the awareness that the Christ is there on the cross. So to that end that figurine was perfect.